Welcome to this special service. What a wonderful opportunity to be in God's presence at this time of the year, the beginning of a new year, the old year that passed away. And we want to just halt and look around, look a little bit back to the old year, looking a little bit forward and just ask God to come and prepare our hearts for what's His plans, what is His priorities for this coming year. So let's pray and just ask the Lord to be with us in this moment. Lord Jesus, thank you for your promise that where we are together in your name, you are with us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will work through this medium and through this message and that you will touch our hearts and change our lives and prepare us for the wonderful things that you've got in store for us for the new year. Thank you, Lord, for your word, your presence and for your wonderful working in our hearts. Amen. You know, if I look at uh, the, the programs of big companies, I see how important it is at the beginning of the year to focus and to look forward, look a little bit back and see this is what we better plan for this year, this we better stop doing, this we better start doing more and more. We see that they will pay money, they will make time, they will stop the whole business for a weekend, even for a week, because they know how important it is to focus and to plan and to make sure that this company is heading in the right direction and that we are really at it at this moment and that we can look forward to a wonderful, prosperous new year. Now we say and we, we wish one another a prosperous new year also as Christians, but it's hard to say that many Christians don't plan for their future their spiritual life, their spiritual growth, making sure that they hear the voice of God, making sure that they are directing their lives in God's direction. Priorities, not mine, but His. I want to ask you to, to make some time to be alone with the Lord, to hear His voice. You have to get rid of old stuff. Don't carry that into the new year and focus on God's plans and God's priorities for the new year. If I look at Jesus' life, I promise you that's one of the outstanding characteristics of his life. Yes, he's been busy with people, working hard, helping people, teaching people, equipping them. But the most important thing is that we see Jesus went alone. Many times his disciples were seeking Jesus and say, where is he? And then someone said, I saw him walk up the mountain. He's again at his quiet place there in the garden. This was a priority in Jesus' life. Even before he had to go and call his disciples, he went and asked his father's advice and get his plans for the right people to ask them to become his disciples. Jesus is an example of how important it is as the Son of God to be alone with his Father, to contact his Father, to be in his presence, to hear his voice and to get direction from him. I read in Matthew 6, let's, let's read it together. Matthew 6 verse 6, Jesus said, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Can you see the importance of a secret hiding place? The importance of being alone with a heavenly Father. And that's why Jesus said there's... There should be a place, a quiet place, where you can close the door, where you can seclude yourself and, and be only focusing on Jesus and the Holy Spirit and on the Father and be open to hear what He 
is planning for your life? Have you got time for Him? Have you got a place where you can be alone in isolation only with Jesus? Listening, uh, worship music, being quiet, busy with His Word, busy with your journal, asking Him, come and show me what's coming this year, what do you want me to do, less, more, or whatever is in your heart, Lord Jesus. I read in, uh, in Paul's uh, testimony, in uh, what he writes to the Philippians, I read there that in Philippians 1, he, he, it is very clear that you can see how important this alone time with God was also for, for, for Paul. Yes, we said this is one of the characteristics of Jesus' life. It was also part of Paul's life. How many times we can see in what he's writing that he's, he's speaking about being alone with God, hearing the voice of God. This is what God showed me. There was a time that in his quiet time, he prepared and thought, this is the direction where I need to go. And then suddenly, God intervened and told him, no, here's a Macedonian voice calling you to another direction. That door is closed. This one I'm opening for you. It's a new door. You never thought about it, but follow me. Even if I see how Paul speaks about his own life, he sought it out. He's got peace in his heart. There's nothing that he fears because if he thinks of the future, he knows it is better for me to die and to be with Christ. I'm sitting here in jail. I'm in prison because of my testimony for Jesus. And I know the possibility to die and to be killed is there. I know that they caught me and put me in jail to end my life. But I spoke to God about it. And I've got peace in my heart. I know the best for me is to go to my Father in heaven. I'm sure about that. I know for your sake, perhaps it's better that God told me rather to stay and not to, to leave this earth and, and, and the ministry and come to the glory of God. It's better to stay where you are to bring the gospel to many other people who don't know the truth. Let's, let's read this together and see what Paul says and how you could read his, his thoughts and, his, and see he's been alone with God and sorted out his life. Philippians 1 verse 21 to 24. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I, I do not know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. <laughs> Can you see? He made his calculations. He's he got it sorted out. He know what he's living for. He know what's the most important thing in his life. He's got his priority focused on God. Jesus, I'm living for you. You are the most important in, factor in my whole life. To live is Christ. To die is gain. I'm not afraid of leaving this earth. I know the eternal values of, and the importance of being with God. I also see that he made some calculations about his life. There's another portion in Philippians 3 where I see he looked back over his life and he, he thought, well, what is really worthwhile in my life? What is important for God? For me, he said, there are a few things that, that I think was very important in my life. That, is, that was my goals. I strived and stretched out to, to gain those uh, goals. But 
You know, since Jesus came into my life and his light shone on that Damascus, Damascus road and I saw Jesus and I experienced his presence and he changed my life, I can tell you everything changed. You know what happened? Yes, I see that there on the Damascus road, he became blind for three days. He could do nothing else than to be arguing, sorting things out with God. He looked over his life. He saw, yes, there are many things that I thought was very important, being busy with this, doing that. And now God just changed it. He says, I see that certain things now in the light of God became worthless. Can I challenge you to go to your journal, to a piece of paper, and write down, what is your goals? What is the important things in your life? What are you striving for to reach and, to th and thinking this is being successful when I reach this? Paul writes this letter and he says, you know, I looked through my life and actually I saw I haven't got a really a relationship with God. I met Jesus now for the first time in my life. But I've been a very religious man since the beginning of my life. I promise you, my life changed. And now I say these things are worthless. Listen how he writes this down in Philippians 3 verse 5. I read this. He talks about himself and all the wonderful things he boasted about long ago. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrew, Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness, based on the law, faultless. But, then the big but, whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Can you see? If being looking back over his life and he asked God to reveal God's heart to him and then he discovered, you know, what does it mean being circumcised, being a real Jew, being an Israelite, the chosen uh, nation? What does it mean that I'm so strict following all the laws that I'm a Pharisee, a person who are known for my religious life and that I am such a wonderful example of God-fearing people. No, he says, you know, even if I think how I, in asking what the, the government wants and what the church wants, I persecuted the Christians. I thought that was God's heart. The zeal in me, you know, I can't describe how I went into houses and, and caught people who are Christians and put them into jail. And, and now my eyes opened and I see something new. I see that those things are worthless. It doesn't count with God. For God, other things are more important. Things that I neglected. Things that I haven't done. Now I've found Christ. And now I've got purpose. Now I know for me it's Christ. And all these important things that people boast about, it's worthless now. Actually, the word uh, is uh, translated, some uh, translations, as garbage as rubbish. It's like something, you don't want it anymore, so you take it and throw it into the bin. You don't think about it again, it's gone. I want to challenge you. Are there things in your life 
that you need to get rid of. Things that is rubbish, actually. Throw it into the bin. That's what the Hebrew writer in, 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 in chapter 12 says. You're an athlete, now run. But if there are things that are disturbing your, your speed and your, your endurance, throw it off. Get rid of it. Don't run with a backpack with, with all kinds of things. No, strip yourself and run for the goal to reach the price in Jesus Christ, the wonderful place in heaven, the crown of glory. So if I look at Paul's life, everything counts if it's gain for Christ. Therefore, may I ask you, what about your life? Did you make time to be alone with God? Or are you just storming into a new year? It's possible to be closer to God after a holiday or a time of being uh, away from work or on your own. But it's also possible that you can become, move further away from God. I know somebody said uh, about his holiday, ah, oh, I'm so worried because it's sad, you know. I planned these wonderful things with my family and having quiet time, but you know, then those friends came. I know we've been drinking and partying and I just missed it. And actually, I moved away from God. While in the beginning of the holiday, I thought, I want to come closer. I want to grow spiritually. I want to read this book. I want to make this and that. I want to rectify things. I want to make time for my wife, my husband, my children. I want to pray with them. I want to hear God's voice. I never, I never reached those goals. If something is important for one, for us, we'll make time for it. <laughs> Check a golfer or any other sport. There's no excuse counting. I know there's only one thing that's important, and that is to shift all other things away because my priority is this or that. If Jesus is your priority, you will make time for him. And I think this is the message that I read and, uh, and that, that God wants to tell us in the beginning of the year. Don't just storm into this new year. Sit still. Hear my voice. Let me redirect your paths, your ways, and let me show you what is on my program, on what is in my plans and in my heart for you, my child. Shall we not only sit still and hear, but execute and do what God tells us to do? Yes, Lord, I'm open. I want you to speak to me. I'm writing here my questions. Come, I'll write down every word that you bring into my mind and I'll fill out my whole journey and I'll fill out my, my list as Paul wrote those, that list and says, these things I threw away. This is Rabbi Shema. I don't want it anymore. But here is the goal of my life. This is what I want to focus on. This is what I want to do now. Are you willing to examine yourselves? Are you willing to Sit still and ask the Lord Jesus, I want to spend time with you, Lord. And I know you promise us in your word, if you come closer to me, I will come closer to you. If you call my name, I'll hear from heaven and I'll come and I'll show you what is important for the new year coming. Are you willing to fast and pray? Fasting means leaving things, leaving things and, and um, make sure that I'm only focusing on one thing, and that is to be with Jesus, to have quiet time with him, to pray. And you know, if I look at Paul's life, yes, I know he's been in jail. And I know God provided actually time for him to be quiet and to, and to help him to write those letters and tell us how he, uh, struggled through these things and what he heard from God that can help us immensely and that we've got here and that we can read and that could inspire us also to go and sit down and ask God's voice to hear it and to write down what comes into our hearts. Paul looked back and then he says, 
I know my relationship with God is in order. You know, you can't hear the voice of God if your relationship isn't right with Him. But Paul says, that's the first and the utmost important thing in my life. I went and sat down with God and I make sure, I make, I made sure that my relationship is okay, that my sins are forgiven, that I've got the right focus now in my life. Therefore, if he looked back at, at his life, he know he knows that there are certain things that that's worthless. But there are certain things that now became the most important thing because it's things of eternal value. It's hard to say, but you know, Paul could have been in jail, in prison. And he could come out of prison, a bitter man, a negative person, full of hatred, full of revenge. No. When he sat there alone with God, he forgave people who've done wrong to him. He cleaned up his life and put all his sins at the cross where Jesus died for our sins. And he opened his life for Lord Jesus, for the Holy Spirit to come and take control of his life and his mind and his planning and his prayers. And God opened the gates of prison and he used him again for the best sake of people around him to hear the gospel. Even there, even there in jail, we read that in the prison, the people around him all became Christians. Then um, he, he writes about uh, to, to the Philippians and the Christians there and he tells them, you know, I spoke to everybody here. Uh, when they came and uh, into my, my room, I told them about the love and the forgiveness of Jesus. And well, actually most of them became Christians. So even in prison, in this difficult time of isolation, he wasn't a bitter man. He used this time to be with God and to come closer to Him. And his heart was so full of the love of the Lord that he overflowed and touched people's lives all around him. You know, if, if he speak, if Paul speaks about the goal of his life, he says, now I know what my priority is. There's one thing. There is one, there is only one thing that I focus on. Shall I read what he says in Philippians 3 verse, uh, verse 12? He used the, uh, uh, the symbol of an athlete running to a goal. He says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This man is sorted out. He knows God's heart. He's in the center of God's will. And that's why he says, I've got one thing now in my life. I'm like that athlete running to reach the goal and the prize. And therefore, two things are important. The first thing is, I must focus. Like an athlete focused there on the crown, on the victory crown, on the end of this race. And therefore to be with Christ, when He comes and take me to His place and to my place that He prepared for me, I will run with everything. I will run focusing on, his, on the goal He has for me. Do you know what God planned for your life for 2022? Do you know? Have you sorted it out with Him? This is the priority, the one thing in my life that God told me, this is what you must be busy doing 
and where all your effort and most of your energy and your money even must go into this direction. You must channel it into this direction because you've got one thing, one priority that is the most important thing in your life. And if you had to make choices, this is the winning priority every time. Are you like an athlete? Throwing away everything that can hinder, anything that could keep you back and run with endurance. Yes, I become sometimes we become weary. I want to I want to sit. I want to uh, uh, rest a bit. I want to turn my back on the goal. But no, I press on, he says. I run with everything. I've got a, a direction and I've got a drive in my heart and I'll run till I reach the price. So that's the one thing. He says, I've got to focus and I want to do the will of God. Christ is my, my highest priority and what he says I'll do. I'll talk about him to the people. I'll talk to him in, to direct me in every step that I need to take. That's the one thing he says, I, I focus and I stretch out. This is my goal. But there's a second thing. He also says, when I look back, I forget. I lose, I'm losing myself from the past. I stretch forward, but I can promise you, as I stretch forward, there are certain things that I leave behind. I don't want this anymore in my life. God showed me, stop this hatred. Make right from your side. Clean up this relationship. Break this wrong relationship. Break this wrong habit. Stop sinning. Forgive people. Leave the disappointments and all the things that you don't want to carry and that keeps you back for running f uh, to, the, to the goal, to reach the goal. Get rid of those things. Don't look back. Focus. And forget certain things. Make it right with Jesus. Lay your sins at the cross. Ask Jesus to forgive, to clean your heart so that you can run 2022 without the baggage and the rubbish and run with one goal in, in, uh, in your heart and that is to please God and to obey Jesus and to obey the Holy Spirit in you. He's here to empower you. He's there with you. He wants to take control. He wants to speak to you. He wants to give you God's plans and God's priorities because as we wish one another, God's plan for you is a prosperous new year. Shall we pray together? <coughs> Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for learning in the Bible the importance that you discovered and that you taught us of being alone with God. Thank you for Paul's life and his example. Thank you for scripture that encouraged us to be alone with God and I want to ask you Lord Jesus help me to discipline myself and to make time and to be alone with you to close the door and thank you that you promise we will hear your voice you will touch us you will redirect us you will forgive us you will take the old things and all the baggage and all the garbage, you will take it away. We want to lay it down at the cross and we want to ask you, Holy Spirit, come and take control. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that we know you promise us a wonderful, blessed, prosperous new year. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.